if you will, the book of Colossians. You say, preacher, that's where we was at Sunday. Well, we've got stuff there. Uh, but no, uh, I do want to go to there. I want to look at uh, something else, not something else. It's a continuation uh, of it. Uh, I want you to look at verse 1 and 2 and chapter 1 begin with. Then we're basically going to be in chapter 4 tonight. But verse 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossae, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Here we find our Heavenly Father and God in his book uses Paul to pen these words and said there to the saints and the faithful brethren in Christ. Now Peter tells us that if you are a believer, you are a saint. Now we've been told through the years that saints are these little idols and so forth, or big idols and so forth, but it's not true, my friends. Saints are those born again, children of God. Now sometimes we who are saints ain't. <laughs> sometimes we don't act like saints. But we still are. And he said here now, he's writing this to the believers, to the brethren. You know, thank God for the family of God. Thank God for the brothers and the sisters. And thank God for the family. Now we'll go to chapter 4. And as you remember on Sunday morning, I preached and Sunday night, preached basically out of chapter 2 and chapter 3 of the book of Colossians. Uh, we found some things he taught us here, some things we ought to be, some things we ought to do, and he taught us some things that we ought not to do. Uh, and then we'll go into chapter 4 and follow as I read verse 1 and 2. Or starting there at verse 1 uh, in chapter 4. Masters, give unto your servants that which is just and equal, knowing that you also have a master in heaven. Now in the preceding verses through here, he's touched on the home, marriage, children, uh, parents, and uh, he, he, he's hit it all. Then he comes here and he, he even speaks to, to masters and to uh, the working field, if you will. But it says, Masters given to your servants that which is just and equal, knowing that ye also have a master in heaven. Now look in verse 2. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. With all praying also for us, that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Walk in wisdom towards them that are without, redeeming the time. And let, verse 6, let your speech be always with grace. Look at that real close. Let your speech be always, not sometime, part of the time, but always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. We find here in the scriptures that they teach us a uh, a, a truth that we must understand uh, that when we are born the first time, we are born spiritually lost. No one that is born of man, no one is born perfect. 
Now, I've heard people talk about some that are perfect and uh, might be, but I've never met none. I, I've been told that some uh, parents, their children are perfect. Uh, the Lord didn't give us any like that. Uh, but uh, I've never talked to those same parents about three years later after the kids start climbing the cabinets and, uh, you know, eating the dog food and everything like that. But uh, the, the Bible tells us uh, in Romans 5, we're all born in sin, that we are, we are born poor, we are born without hope in ourselves. But through Jesus, we can be given a new life. So here we see in chapter 1 where he's talking to believers. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 13, says, Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Child of God, born again Christian, we were redeemed through the blood of Jesus Christ. We were redeemed. And unsaved folks, the only way you can get saved is through the blood of Jesus Christ. Being redeemed, re redeemed means to buy back. And the only way we can be bought back and uh, is by the, the deal uh, at Calvary where God sent his son and there at Calvary Jesus died for the sins of the world but he says here in whom we have redemption mark it down in whom redemption is not in a church now you can go to church every day of your life and split hell wide open church will not take you to heaven uh, you, you can count on uh, whatever you want. But my friend, the only way you can be saved, be redeemed, is through the blood. And he says even the forgiveness of sin. Skip down to verse 21. And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. I like that verses there. You know, they tell us that uh, none of us are good. None of us, uh, well, again, he, he said in Ephesians that we're dead in trespasses and sin. But uh, through the Lord Jesus Christ redeeming us, uh, we have been given life again. We've been given real life. And these here teaches it doesn't matter how wicked, how evil, how sinful that a person is. There is no one too sinful. There is no one too wicked. There is no one uh, too sinful to be saved. The only thing that will save a person is the Lord Jesus Christ being redeemed, trusting in him. And any person, I don't care how bad they are, I don't care. Uh, I believe it was yesterday or may have been Monday, the woman in Terre Haute, Indiana, that was scheduled to die there. Uh, this woman had taken a number of years ago uh, a pregnant lady. I think she was about eight months along, if I remember. Uh, this lady had taken her and killed her. And then she cut that woman open and took that baby out. And uh, uh, the baby lived. Uh, but anyway, she was found guilty of it. And she was uh, sentenced to die. And that was to be yesterday, if I remember right. But from a higher court, they uh, said that uh, not right now. I don't know whether it will late or not. But because of her sins, she deserved to die. But you know what, my friend? Jesus loved her as much as he loved you and I. Amen. I mean, there's no one that's too far in sin that the Lord 
is not willing to save. In Colossians chapter 2, verse number 13, he says, And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, quickened to be made alive, having forgiven you all trespasses and blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. My friends, tonight after seeing what he's told us in chapter 3 and 4, tonight I want us to consider the change that has we have experience in our life. If you have been saved, you, you're not the same person you used to be. There have been changes there. We need to consider that. Now that change and what others see, uh, that change is, well, like the woman, the well. I mean, uh, the Lord saved her, and she went out not long. There's a lot of people coming back. And they had been saved because of her testimony, had been saved because of seeing her. And the unsaved world is looking at us. Now, we find that Colossians here is a letter about Christ and his work of changing people. Only Christ can change people. Now, I know we live in a, a, a day that a lot of things are dark. We live in a day where, uh, uh, really, it's a, it's a day that uh, a lot of hatred. I mean, uh, don't see a whole lot, a whole lot of love. But see a whole lot of hate. Uh, we find uh, this person hating this person. We find uh, in the politics, we find the parties uh, hating each other and. Inside the parties, they hate each other, and inside those parties, they hate each other. In churches today, we find where people hate. In religion, we, we find where all kind of fighting, hating, and bitterness is going on. But child of God, it's no time for that. You know, we're, we're too close home to have all of this. There's an old song that I like. And it says, from a little child, I knew that I was born to serve the Lord. And as I grew older, I trusted in his word. He has stood by me so tenderly as the years have come and gone. And I don't believe he'll fail me just a few steps from home. No, I don't believe he'll fail me. Just a few steps from home, it's been a long, long journey, but I've never been alone. I can see the first dawning on my homecoming morning. No, I don't believe he'll fail me just a few steps from home. So here I stand at journey's end. I know it won't be long till we shall view that country that we've been calling home. If he fails me here when I'm so near at all, would be in vain. But he's sweeter and he's closer now than he's ever been. And no, I don't believe he'll fail me just a few steps from home. Child of God, we're just a few steps from home. I mean, this this could be the dawning of that day. Now in chapters 1, we find through 3, he's re, he, he is dealing with the redemption of the believers. Here in chapter 4 now, he encourages, he encourages believers to consider our responsibility to share the good news of the gospel and in sharing the gospel there are three things i want us to think about from the scriptures here tonight hurriedly number one the way we pray 
Now this is just taken in consideration that Christians pray. Okay? We ought to be a praying people. You say, well, preach, I don't pray. Well, if you're saved, you are to. If you're saved, you need to have a little talk with your Heavenly Father. <laughs> we all do. So the way we pray, there in uh, chapter 4 and verse 2, it says continue, continue. Now, if I've got that figured out right, that means it's already been going on. And he said keep it up. <laughs> continue in prayer and watch the same with thanksgiving. With all praying also for us, that God would open the door unto us, a door of utterance, to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. We also pray, pray focusing on the work of the gospel in our own life. Child of God, our prayers, one way or the other, ought to be focused on the gospel and reaching others for Christ. Now, if we pray for our children, we ought to pray for their salvation. If we pray for our family, we ought to be praying for their salvation. If we're praying for the sickness uh, of people, uh, we ought to pray for the sickness, but we ought to be praying for the salvation. Amen. You know, many times we pray for someone that has uh, a broken limb and all oh, that can hurt. I've had a few of them. They can hurt. But my friend, I, I, I think the Lord said something about it. it, it you know, it's, it, it's, it's better to... Uh, well, if a person goes to hell with a broken arm or a broken leg, it's bad. But you know, hell's the worst. We ought to be praying to keep them out of there. What I'm trying to say, everything we pray for, we pray for our government, we're praying for all this happened this week. But what are we praying for? Should it be that these folks will come to know Christ? You see, they're the ones that Jesus came to die for. We're to be holding them up in prayer. Now, we need to pray focusing on the worth of the gospel in our own lives. What the gospel has done here in my life. We've seen what it did for the woman at the well. We've seen what it's done in other people's lives. But we ought to be folks and also on the work of the gospel in our own lives. And following the instructions on Christian living here in chapters 1 through 3, we are reminded here of the importance of prayer. And as we focus on living, like Christ, we must pray constantly, we must pray watchfully, and we must pray thankfully. Now, pray watchfully. We are to pray with awareness of the work of God in our life now and with an eye uh, towards his return. Child of God, let me ask you, have you realized today the Lord's working in your life. He's working today in our life. Well, preacher, I didn't see him nowhere. Well, I haven't seen him either, but I sure know he's there. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> and you do too. You stop and think and watch. You see, he's the one that's taking care of you, protecting you. How many times he protects us watches out for us that we don't even know about. I think every day we ought to pray him, just thanking him for what he's done for us that day. Not only the things that we've seen him do, but the things that he has kept us from. And we ought to uh, pray with the awareness of God working in uh, our lives. 
the blessings that we have, they're not because of us. They're because he has given them to us. Colossians 3, 3 says, For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. We need to pray watchfully, and then we need to pray thankfully. Pray with uh, uh, the gratitude and the thanks as we remember the work of the gospel in our life. Remember, it's by his death, burial, and resurrection, the gospel, that you and I have been saved. We need to thank him for what he has done in uh, our life. And he says in Colossians 2, 6, as you have thought, therefore receive Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. We ought to walk with him. He saved us, and uh, we're in him, and the Holy Spirit in us. And we ought to have that desire to walk with him. And as we've seen in the past chapter, both messages on Sunday, that we ought to walk the way he wants us to walk, and the things that shouldn't be in our life, we should get them out. He said in verse 7, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. 315, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts to the which also ye are called in one body and be ye thankful. Verse 16, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. If we would just let that verse get into our heart, in our lives, it'd take care of a lot of things going on in Christian's life. Whatever we do, can we do it for the glory of Christ? <laughs> Whatever we do, the way we treat people, the way we talk to people, everything we do, we ought to realize we're doing it unto the Lord. Amen. Well, we need here, uh, pray that God would work in our lives, as I said. <coughs> we need to pray that God would provide opportunities uh, for the gospel. And my friends, unsaved people, Paul said, you were to Christian, you were dead. You were dead. Unsaved people are dead in Christ. I mean, dead spiritually. They're without Christ. They are dead in their sins. Now, it's only the Lord that can save, if you will. But we we need to ask the Lord for the opportunity to give people the gospel. You and I can talk to dead people, and as I said Sunday, you know, I've seen so many people talking to dead people, but I've never seen a dead people <laughs> talk to a live people. It can't be done. It can't be done. What was it? Three weeks ago, and I believe it was Toledo, if I remember right there, uh, they brought a, a person in to the funeral home, that had died. Next morning, the funeral director started to do the embalming and all, found out that person wasn't dead. But they hadn't been dead and come back. <laughs> the unsaved people are dead. You and I need to pray. Lord, show us where to go. Lord, lead us. And I'll tell you, God knows that one. God knows where they are. 
We need to pray and ask him to lead. You know, the Apostle Paul, and uh, while Paul was there in prison, which he was there, it seemed like half of his life after he got saved, but Paul there in prison, he wanted to share the gospel. And Paul even asked God to open the doors for the message. Philippians chapter 1, verse 12, But I would ye should understand, brethren, that the things which happen unto me have fallen out rather under the furtherance of the gospel, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places. And many of the brethren in the Lord waxing confident be, or by my bonds are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 9, When I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. You go to the door, someone slams the door in your face, you talk to someone and they cuss you out, they say they hate Jesus and they don't want nothing to do with, don't want nothing to do with you and all, and uh, sometimes we get discouraged. But you know what? They can reject us. But when the Holy Spirit of God starts working on that heart, it can't work. The day I got saved, my friend, I didn't go to church to get saved. I went to church that day so my wife wouldn't ask me to go anymore. But it was there in church that day, the Holy Spirit got a hold of my heart. Amen. That day I fell and asked Christ to come in my Why? Because the Holy Spirit was doing the work in my life. Now we need, uh, I'm, I'm watching them trying. Uh, the hurt. But we need to pray that God would give us a clearness with the gospel. The Apostle Paul, the uh, great, probably the greatest pe preacher since the Lord himself, and uh, Paul asked God to help him speak the gospel very, very clearly. Uh, and we need today, we also need to ask God to make our message clear and trust that he can speak through us even as weak as we are. My friends, you can speak fancy words and they won't wake the dead. Won't do it. We need to just simply pray, Lord, you help us. We ought to keep our our arms out and witnessing and testament, but we ought to keep it simple enough that anyone can understand. I believe it was Mr. Moody many years ago. He said, when you preach, preach it, put the cookies down on the bottom shelf. He said, if you put them on the bottom shelf, the little kids can reach them. And said, even the tall people can reach them. We need to very simply give the story of Jesus. You say, well, people won't like it and they won't receive it. Well, my friend, if they don't, that's not our fault. He has told us to give the gospel. Sometimes people get discouraged because they give out the gospel and witness and people won't get saved. Well, he said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. You see, the saving part is up to him. Uh, and uh, uh, but second law, and not only the way we pray, but the way we live. To be serious about giving out the gospel, we must consider the way we live. There in 4 or 5, he said, walk in wisdom. Walk in wisdom towards them that are without, redeeming the time. Redeeming the time. We need to live with wisdom in this world, living with wisdom, uh, knowing how to live in a way that is constant with the one with who we are in Christ Jesus. Now, uh, again, all of this here, and basically getting out of uh, Colossians 4, 
and three and two and one. Uh, also, but uh, as, as as children uh, of God, we need to walk in such a way. The unsaved people are watching you. I'll guarantee you today, when you come to church, somebody was watching you. Yeah. I guarantee you, when you went through Kroger's today, someone was watching you. I mean, wherever people are what, and we need to walk in such a way that they will see Christ in us, is what Paul and them are telling us in these. Now, you see, Jesus' purpose for coming into this world was that people might be saved. And the purpose that the Lord had for coming should be the same purpose that we have. Now, no, we can't die for man's sin. Don't need to. Christ already died for it. But I'll tell you, we ought to have the purpose of wanting to see people saved and, and realizing that we must redeem the time. James, in chapter 4, verse 13 and 14, says, Go to now that uh, ye that say, Today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. But verse 14 says, Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a, as a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. The scripture tells us here, James speaking, the Lord speaking, Paul speaking, tells us to redeem the time. You know what we're going to get done it's not going to be done yesterday. It's not going to be done tomorrow. It's going to be today. And uh, so we need to be faithful with the gospel. We need to be faithful the way we live. Sometimes people say, well, I'm saved, so now I can do anything I want to do. Well, there's only a couple things wrong with that. If that is your attitude, no, you probably better check and make sure you're saved. Because if you're saved, the Lord's going to do a work on your heart. And uh, Romans 8, it tells us there that we're predestinated to be conformed unto the image of his dear son. You see the Lord working daily to make us look like, or God is working in our life to make us look like his son. Now, we've seen when we pray and uh, the way we live, but he also tells us, we need to be careful and watch the way we speak. If we're going to be serious about the gospel and giving it out and so forth, we must be concerned about the way we speak. Christians, it does matter how we speak. It does matter how we talk. There in verse 6, chapter 4, he said, Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. Let your speech be seasoned with salt. Now, uh, enough salt that will, will make it taste good, okay? But don't make it so salty that it ain't no good. You know, the world is sick of religious people. Sometimes we get so religious, and I mean, we talk all these big high words, and I, I've, I've never been excused of using too many of them. I don't know any of them. But, uh, I mean, uh, he says season uh, with salt. You remember Matthew there? He said uh, to believers that ye, that we are the salt of the world. So we need uh, to be careful the way we speak and we should pray for the opportunities uh, to give out the gospel and we should live uh, in a way that speaks good of the gospel declares the gospel but we got to remember that we must speak the gospel again he said go you into all the world and preach and warn and give out the the gospel so now I find here that Paul gives two warnings about speaking the gospel. Number one, he says that we are to speak with grace. Speak with grace. Keep in mind that the gospel is serious. While at the same time remembering to so many the gospel 
is offensive to them. You know, people just hate the Lord. People just hate anything to do with God. So we need to be careful. We can give out. You know, you, 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 a doctor, he can take a knife and he can do you good, or he can take a knife and he can do you harm. <laughs> you know, our words are that way, Christians. We need to be serious and careful. He says that uh, to speak with grace. Now, we cannot water down the gospel, if you may, but we can share it with kindness, with grace, and with love. He says, speak the truth in love. And then we need to speak with readiness, not only with grace and good, uh, uh, just uh, uh, seasoned enough and so forth, but he says, speak with readiness. And having been redeemed as Christian, redeemed ourselves, we ought to always be prepared to tell others about our salvation experience or how we got saved. Now, a lot of times people say, well, preacher, I, I don't know how, or I, I, others say, I don't know how to witness to people and all. Listen, you don't have to memorize the whole Bible to witness to somebody. When that woman, the well, got saved, she just got saved. And she went, you know what she told him? Look what he did for me. <laughs> Let me tell you about this man. Listen, he could have condemned that woman. That woman had been married five times and living with one outside of the marriage. But the Lord did not even mention those to her. Now, except to say that he knew about it. <laughs> he knows about everything. But my friend, he didn't condemn. You see, the blood of Jesus Christ can cleanse from all sin. So we are to simply go, we're to take it, and be ready. First Peter chapter 3 says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you of reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Christian, God help us. God help us to pray right. God help us to live right. And God help us to speak right. In these days, all three of those are sure needed. In a divided country that we live, in a divided world that we live in, I tell you, they need to see Christ. People are not going to get saved until they hear the gospel, until they see the gospel live. We need to be ready in our day to give an answer to what Christ has done for us. Amen. It's sure needed. Let us look to God. Let us live right. Let us trust God. You say, but preacher, it's hard. You say, but preacher, people don't like them. It's not even safe. Well, remember this. You and I that are saved. You're in the palm of the hand of God. Another old song I like. If I could have the world and all it owns, a thousand kingdoms, a thousand thrones, if all the earth were mine to hold with wealth my only gold, I'd spend my gold on selfish things without the love that your life brings. Just a little bit more is all I'd need till life was torn from me. But I'd rather be in the palm of your hand. Though rich or poor I may be, faith can see right through the circumstances, sees the forest in spite of the trees. Your grace provides for me. 
If I should walk the streets, no place to sleep, no faith in promises you keep, I'd have no way to buy my bread with a bottle for my bed. But if I trust the one who died for me, who shed his blood to set me free, if I live my life to trust in you, your grace will see me through. And I'd rather be in the palm of your hand, Lord, Though rich or poor I may be, faith can see right through the circumstances and sees through the forest in spite of the trees. If I could have the world, if I could have the world and all its own, it's not for me. I'm just glad I'm in the palm of your hand. You know, Christians, here's where we are, in the palm of his hand. You know, today, you and I don't know what the Lord kept us from. We was in his hand. As we do what the Lord wants us to do in these dark hours, we need to be more like him. You see, the Lord said to his children, there's some things you ought to do in your life. There's some things that ought to be there. He said there's some things that should not be in your life. And he said the reason for all of those are that you might be obedient to me and that the world might see. You're saved. You're different. And that will be the testimony that we need to see unsafe. I'll tell you, wouldn't it be good in our nation if we'd see, they say, what, maybe 10% of the people are saved. Wouldn't it be good to see 10% of our people, believers? Wouldn't it be good if all of those would just take a Bible, not just go out on the streets and argue with people and fight with people. But if we just simply go out and say, my friend, God loves you, and I love you too. Just faithfully. Good. Well, preacher, I got all kinds of problems. I know I did have too, but that's what Jesus did for me. You give your testimony. That's what the Lord wants. No, Lord, we you say, I don't have to. If you're saved, you have a testimony. You say, preach, I've never been a drunker or a, a cusser or a smoker or a chewer. Well, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You've got a testimony. Your mom and dad taught you something. And you ought to live it. We ought to live it. We ought to be thankful for it. You see, a person doesn't have to have a terrible reputation, past history and all, to be saved. Too many times... We make these that have lived in sin. We almost hold them up too high because the Lord saved them. He took as much of the blood of Jesus Christ to save me as it did the worst sinner ever saved in this world. Let's simply go. You know, we don't live in a world of bad people. We just got bad people in the world we live. And so we just simply need to love them, to care for them. And that's what the Lord told us to do as we stand heads are bowed eyes are closed the pianist is playing god has spoken he's rung your doorbell knocked on your door will you answer and let him in to be saved or just to be the child he wants you to be will you come oh will you come Whatever that need, will you slip out and come? If you're unsaved, let me know. We'll make sure to show you the 
Christian, come. Do what God wants you to do. You've been what he wants you to be? You say, no, I haven't, preacher. Well, listen, don't go out the way you come in. Take care of it so you can go out. Be that witness for him. Will you come? Will you come tonight? One more verse. Will you come? It. Look forward to seeing you Sunday. Go out and let's be the witness the Lord wants us to be. Ask God what he'd have us to do, where to go. And I'll tell you, he'll lead us. Where he leads me, I will follow. Follow, follow. I'll follow Jesus anywhere. As long as I know he's the doing the leading. <laughs> he's ahead of me. We love you. God bless you. Brother Don, dismiss us in prayer.